is the first of the new format of having three days vlogging rather than six. We've been prepping some beds to sew some Simidi wrapper. Uh, Mum has a go at being a cameraman with mixed results and some seed saving. So um, let's go. We are going to be prepping a bed today, which is the bed that the second early potatoes came out of. We had quite a good crop of the second earlies actually, it was the main crop that were just a waste of time. Second earlies were good and the bed's not too bad and what we're going to be growing in there over winter is Simidi wrapper, which is a type of turnip tops I suppose. They're related to turnips but you eat them like sort of like a purple sprouting broccoli type thing it's um flower stalks that you uh just harvest they don't get that tall you just keep picking the flowers and they are a little bit bitter okay i quite like bitter things like uh, chicory and endive and that kind of thing but a friend of mine got simidi wrapper a couple of times in you know like a veg box that you can get delivered and um, she said it turned her face inside out. It was that bitter. So you've got to be careful how you have it. Uh, if you put it in a stew or something like that where it's got a chance to kind of for the flavour to just fill the whole thing and just end up with a pot of bitter, basically. Um, but if you just kind of saute them with butter and put them with spaghetti and stuff, they're absolutely fantastic. And they grow really, really well when sown about now. But like I say, the second early potatoes were um, came out mm, quite a while ago now and we're just going to be putting a bit of compost on and you know i've had quite a lot of problems with this sort of amino pyrolid stuff so we're just putting our own compost down basically but what we're going to do is actually spread the compost out and then we've got a couple of days of kind of rain sun warm temperatures but quite wet so what i'm hoping is going to happen is we're going to put our own compost down spread it out rake it about a bit and then leave it for a while maybe a week and let anything that's going to germinate in that soil in this perfect germination kind of temperature it's going to come up so when it's really small we can just hoe it all off before we sow the simidi wrapper into that soil because it's going to be direct sown if we sow it straight into that soil and all the weed seeds come up at the same time as it, it's just going to be a pain. So we're just going to put it down, leave it for a week and see what comes up. I'm assuming it's going to be a lot of tomatoes, <laughs> but that's only going on what it happened at home. So we're going to wait for all that to come up. Basically, that's what we're doing today. We have a three bin compost system. So whilst one's being filled up, that's going fine and then once it's full we turn it out into the second bin where it stays for maybe six months and then we turn it out into the third bin when it's pretty well rotted down and then we leave it there for another couple of months and it comes out like this we're taking this out of the third bin uh, mum is using our incredibly high-tech sieve uh, so what she's doing is sieving out the main like lumps and bumps from the compost this doesn't go to waste, we use it, we put it in the bottom of the bean trenches and that kind of thing. It's, it's still used, it's just not for the seedbed. You can see it's quite a few bits of rubbery stuff in there. But it's all good, it won't ever go to waste. <laughs> there is so much life in this compost, it's just absolutely writhing with worms and small beasts. It's lovely stuff. So uh, mum is being the cameraman for the next uh, two sections, so apologies. <laughs> Go around the other side. Oh, look what I just found. What? To that. <laughs> oh, look at that. Dark, dark, dark. Chocolate. Thanks. That rain's getting quite heavy now. Mm. What do you reckon? Another one of those barrow loads on the top? 
reckon that's probably enough, do you know? Do you? Well, I think we're going to have to retreat anyway for a minute. Oh, I don't want to do that, do I? <laughs> right, there we go, me back behind the camera now. Um, and that's that. We will just now wait. Okay, now it's just a case of waiting for the weeds to grow, really, before we can cut them off. Um, the only other thing I'm going to do today while I'm up here is blight watch in the polytunnel. So I'm going to open the door. Fingers crossed they're all alright. Well, even without blight, the tomatoes start looking a little bit sad at this time of year because you chop all their leaves off, so they just look like kind of straggly strings. But, what do you think, Mum? Well, there's no sign of blight. I hope. Yes. tomato sorting today because when we stripped all of the fruit off the tomatoes that are outdoors that have blight when you first take the tomatoes off it can be quite difficult to tell if the individual fruit has actually been affected by the blight some of them obviously when you take them off you can see immediately something's wrong but the ones that we're trying to ripen up at home over the days the ones that have been affected you start seeing the changes in them after a while this is what we took off the bed that all looked pretty healthy. Um, the ones that were obviously affected by blight we threw away immediately, but these Roma, all of these were green like this when we took them off the plant. And you can see that quite a few of them have actually ripened up in the meantime. They seem quite unaffected. The garnet cherries, um, we've already thrown quite a lot of them away because they were quite badly affected. And these chaps I don't think are going to ripen up. These are going to be the chutney candidates. You can see that is the blight on the garnet. They were really badly affected. You can see it just kind of blisters and goes black. And there's no way of keeping these tomatoes. They're just going to rot. So they're for the bin, unfortunately. trusses that came off this plant, really nice. Right, so these are the goners. So actually the damage isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, we've still got quite a few here that look like we are going to be able to ripen them up, so that's pretty positive really.
But something else I am going to do while I'm messing around with tomatoes this morning is do a bit of seed saving. So we've grown more varieties than we have any other year this year. We've got, I think it's 18, possibly 19 different varieties. And basically there's only one of them which is an F1, so I can't save the seed from that. But all the rest of them either came from seed that I'd saved myself from previous years or have been part of a seed swap from other people's saved seed. So the seed swapping thing is quite um, prevalent on Instagram and I really want to have all of the 18, 19 varieties that we've grown this year ready and uh, available to be giving to anybody who wants them for next year. So I'm going to be doing that this afternoon. There's quite a few different techniques you can use to save tomato seed. They are not fussy. The technique I always use is just smearing across kitchen roll. Um, you can do this neatly and you can do it messily. Basically, you just wanna dry them out. So the kitchen roll absorbs the moisture and you're just left with the seed. If you place them quite carefully in strips, which is something I'm gonna to try to do, um, you can actually just lay the strip on compost and the seeds will go. So you don't even have to try and peel them off the kitchen roll when you come to sow them in spring, which is what I'm hoping to do. Not necessarily for the ones I'm growing myself, but the ones that I'm giving away to other people, I would like them to be a bit neater. If there is any that you're particularly interested in or you're interested in doing seed swapping, come and find me on Instagram and let me know. We'll start doing it in the spring probably, or maybe even over winter when we've got nothing better to do. Well, I've got seven varieties that I'm gonna do the seed saving for today. So I'm gonna do some for myself, which is gonna be the old smear method, and some, like I say, for the seed swaps later in the year, which I hope are gonna look slightly nicer than mine normally do. I'm gonna start with that little cherry, the garnet. So I'm not gonna to stick to doing just five little seeds for mine. Yeah, so this is a really slow but quite satisfying job. So I'm just gonna put this on like super, super speed and I'll see you at the other end. Like I say, if you are interested, be able to do a sweet seed swap. Can't say that. Well, I've escaped from doing all those tomatoes. Uh, I got about halfway through and uh, decided I might do a bit of that tomorrow. <laughs> Come up here, it's a gorgeous evening. Sun's streaming in through the trellis on that side and through the jasmine. Um, yeah, so didn't really come up here for anything specific other than just because it's a gorgeous evening. So I'm gonna have a bit of a wander around. One thing I do know that I need to do is the tree spinach that we've been growing this year for the first time, which has actually worked out brilliantly. I'm so pleased with it. Like I've said before, sometimes like it's nice to try new things every year and odd things and stuff you haven't grown before. But sometimes, in fact, quite often you realize why they're not commonly grown and why you haven't grown them before. It's normally because they don't taste that great, asparagus peas. Sadly, they did taste of something, but it was disgusting. So anyway, ignore the asparagus peas. Tree spinach. They are very, very closely related to a weed 
whose name I can't remember right now, but I will put it here when I've looked it up later. Um, so it's very closely related to that and it also seeds itself really fast apparently. I, both of our sections, the one in the top bed and the one next to the sweet corn, have produced uh, flower heads. So I'm just gonna go and chop the whole lot off, bag it all up because I'll strip it when I get home. <laughs> So I'm gonna go and chop all those heads off and then we're gonna give it a feed and a water and see if we can get another flush before it gets too cold to grow it. You can see this is this is really <laughs> I mean if all of those seed go, look at it all, it's just gonna be a massacre. Focus, focus, focus. There we go. Yeah, look, there's tons of it in there. Get this off quickly. <laughs> Not short of a bit of spinach tonight. Morning. I'm going to be moving some chard plants today. So where we had the tomatoes that got the blight, the outdoor ones, I, on one side I planted some dwarf yellow beans which we've mostly harvested all of them now so I'm probably going to clear them out and on the other edge I sowed, I mm, can't remember how long ago it must have been, maybe about a month ago, I sowed a load of chard seed down one side and now the tomatoes are over what I want to do is clear that bed totally and get some more green manure down in there but it means that the chard is in the wrong place and I sort of used it as a bit of a nursery bed so I'm now going to take out those plants that have germinated separate them because they're in clumps and then pot them up into pots and then keep them for one of the covered beds later on so the bed that I planted the Phasalia in last week is going to have uh, is going to be covered so they'll probably go in there or they might go into the polytunnel depending on which. So basically I'm just going to get them out of the ground to prepare that bed for its winter pasture really. So these are the pots I'm going to use and these are the plants I'm moving. So these are actually rainbow chard and I've said before that it's a compound seed so you get clusters of germination which is going to work out quite well actually because when I take them out of here I can just separate them out and then plant them up individually when they're ready. That one's got a bit big isn't it?
there's about 20 plants there so that should be pretty good if they all survive this is a lesson in planning what you're gonna put in your bed before you actually do it because the tomatoes and the beans were definitely coming out before winter and the chard was gonna stay in it was a bit silly to plant it on the side but I've just used it as a seed bed now so um, these should be absolutely fine and I'll stick them in the polytunnel or the covered bed when they're a bit bigger and that was the last of the sunshine for the day Everything's feeling incredibly dark and gloomy at the moment so I'm gonna pick some flowers to brighten the house up that's uh, one advantage of growing a lot of dahlias uh, I wrote about it would have been about a year ago now I wrote a blog about how um, I found it really difficult to cut flowers like generally speaking um, I would rather a plant than a bunch of flowers if you sort of see what I mean um, I just prefer the things to be living but I'm sort of slowly coming around to it particularly with the dahlias because the more you cut them the more they flower that's the same with things like sweet peas and that sort of thing so I'm I'm absolutely fine with cutting them I find it almost impossible to cut something like a tulip when it's just got that one flower for the year I can't do it <laughs> yeah so anyway I'm gonna go and uh, cut some dahlias for home Cheers. That was a trial of a new format. Uh, let me know what you think. I seem to have done an enormous amount of chatting this week. I'm sorry about that. I don't know why. When I was editing it, it was just like me constantly. Sorry about that. Um, that's not part of the new format. That was just an anomaly. Next week's main jobs are going to be less chatting. Uh, more seed saving so obviously I mentioned about the tomato seeds and do let me know I'll put all the details of how to get in touch and how to get involved in seed swapping underneath this uh, in the comments no not in the comments in the blurb that goes with it two ways to get involved in the seed swapping like I say it's quite uh, prevalent on Instagram we do quite a lot of um, backwards and forwards of different seeds but also when I'm getting ready to give out my seeds and get the seed swap up and running, what I'll be doing is sending out an email on my email list. I don't spam people, I promise. In fact, I haven't even sent an email out yet. It's only gonna be for things like seed swaps or if there's a particular job that needs doing and I've done a blog post about it, I might send it out, but it's not gonna be more than one a month. So if you are interested in just seeing when the seeds are coming up and what's gonna be available, join my mailing list which is on my website there's a link at the bottom there's it's all over but I promise not to spam you <laughs> uh, there's a couple of other things to mention firstly um, I do if anybody's interested in the simidi wrapper which is what I was sewing which I'm going to be sewing next week into the bed that I put the compost in um, I do have a little bit of a write-up about growing simidi wrapper and uh, what to use it for in cooking and things on the blog so I will stick that link in underneath as well. To go along with the tomato seed saving I'm going to put as the follow-on video for this at the end put the video I did about uh, sowing tomato seed, growing them on and what you do from that point forward so I'll just tack that on to the end of this video so if you do want to see that one in particular it will come up on the screen at the end of the video I'm getting better at this <laughs> um, the spring onions from last week 
are all up and looking good. I'm going to be sowing the Lilia spring onions probably this evening. So we'll have the two types, these are the white ones. So that's what I'm going to be doing next week. Really, really cracking on with what's going to be growing in the polytunnel. As you saw, I've taken the chard out of that bed. So that's going into the uh, wings, waiting to go in as soon as the tomatoes come out of the poly. These are going in as well, as are going to be the red ones. I'm also going to have a go at sowing a couple of rows of carrots in the polytunnel. Never grown winter carrots before. So although I'm getting quite a lot of stuff ready to go into the polytunnel, I've got a bit of a hold up, a bit of a traffic jam, because the tomatoes are fine, they're still going, they're still going okay at the moment, but they'll finish fairly shortly. And then we've got the places full of peppers. So last year I grew all of the peppers in pots, and that was brilliant, um, because we could kind of shift them around. And we actually managed to overwinter one, which was the which was the green jalapeno um, but I didn't realize it was going to be quite so easy as it was so it's over winter the ones that are in the poly this year but they're actually growing in the ground so I'm gonna to have to get them out dig them out and put them into big pots which is all very well and good except that last year we were still picking the hot lemon chilies in November which was excellent but it means that I don't really want to be moving them and digging them out when they're still fruiting. So I'm a bit unsure about timing, how I'm going to get them out of the polytunnel in time to get stuff into there that's going to grow happily over winter. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge for next week, I think. Have a look at how I'm going to actually do that. Because they're right on the front. When I take the tomatoes out, there will be space at the back, but then they're not going to get very much light because the chilies are like right in front of them. So didn't do that very well did I sowing lettuces I've been buying lettuces like a crazy uh, after having all of your fantastic suggestions was it last week I think it was last week uh, masses of really good winter lettuce suggestions so I will put a list in fact I'm gonna be uh, telling you what I'm sowing next week anyway so that's gonna be quite a lot of the ones that you suggested for me which is brilliant um, and to be honest, that's about it for this week. So, like I said, that was the new format, the three days. Um, I'm hoping that in other weeks I'm not gonna be chatting quite so much. So yeah, if you did enjoy it, please give me the thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't already, subscribe. Every Tuesday still, even though it's only three days this week, it's not dramatically shorter. And that's it. So, cheers. See you next week.